What is up today guys? We have a video today about continuous nebulizers. So I've got a low volume, I've got a high volume. I'm going to give you the rundown on how to set this thing up. Ready? Cut to the intro. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of setting up a, a large volume nebulizer and a small volume nebulizer with the proper amount of drug that's going to nebulize over the proper amount of time. This should be review for most, but it's good to review stuff. So let's so get I've got to it. two products here. Both of them are from Vier, which used to be Care Fusion. Uh, not that that matters because they are all measured the same way. So let's first start with a high volume nebulizer, uh, high volume continuous nebulizer, large volume nebulizer, whatever you'd like to call it. But there's one important thing. If I'm new at a facility and I'm going and I'm asked to set up a high volume nebulizer, they all work the same. It's not that complicated. But one thing I need to know, I need to get the paper out. So don't just take the paper and throw it over and let it go underneath everything else. No, you need the paper because we have some very important aspects to it. The most important aspect of this is to know what the output is. Now, you have this really nice cheater on here, of course, that shows you all the different amounts of drugs and whatnot, but what I'm looking for is right here under number four. Under number four right there, if I can get it to focus, you're gonna see at a liter flow of 11 liters per minute, it's gonna output 30 mLs per hour. Let's make this super easy. So, this is really nice, and you can also see at the, at the top of this, it says, right here at the very top, it says, Misty, in, Misty Finity Continuous Dose of 11 liters per minute. So, this is the dose protocol. But we know how much volume is needed, right? Because if we run it, want it to run for an hour, we need to have 30 mLs in it. We want it to run for two hours, we need to have 60 mLs in it. So on and so forth, running 11 liters per minute. So what you're gonna see here is you're gonna have markings on the side of it. So we have markings on the side of this of mL marks. So we have 30, 90, 150 and 210 and then it maxes out. Remember, it's gonna nebulize at 11 liters per minute, 30 mLs. So the first thing we're gonna do, absolute easiest thing to do, is we're gonna use this right here as a gauge. So if the physician wants 10 milligrams of medication, so 10 milligrams, a standard albuterol dose is 2.5. We wanna do 10, we wanna put we're gonna take this, very easy. We're gonna take a 2.5, a 2.5, a 2.5, and a 2.5, and we're gonna take and fill the rest of it up with normal saline up to 30. And then we're gonna run it. We didn't have to look at this thing at all. I mean, this is nice, right? But there's a quick way to do these type of things. So if they want it to run for two hours and they want 20 milligrams of albuterol over two hours, or 10 milligrams per hour for two hours. It's a long nib, but that'll work. We're gonna take and put one, 2.5, two, 2.5s, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That will total 20 milligrams of albuterol. For that two hour nib that the physician wants 20 milligrams, we would fill it up to the 60 mark. So that's gonna be halfway between the 30 and the 90. And then running at 11 liters per minute, that's gonna nebulize 10 milligrams for the first hour, 10 milligrams for the second hour, total volume of 60 mLs. So really an easy way to kind of do this without looking over here and going through, and this is, I think it's slightly confusing. What you need to know as a review, you need to know your liter flow, like on number four here, and your output on that liter flow. After that, everything can be calculated in the hour. So. Outputs are in um, milliliters per hour. So that is your large volume neb. So when would you use a large volume neb versus small volume? 
Um, personal preference, honestly. You have to run this. Of course, you run this in. Uh, right through here, you run corrugated tubing off of this to a an aerosol mask. This can actually screw into the flow meter and it's going to nebulize. So, if you think that they're going to like that extra kind of mist, that nebulized fluid, then that will work really well And if you're doing it for an hour. I prefer these. Uh, just because I like the high output of them. Now, the high output's really nice. It looks like a continuous nebulizer when I walk in. Uh, the next one is a small volume nebulizer, and I'll show you that a little bit. Uh, but this is my preference, just because um, to me it feels like they're on a continuous nebulizer. Next one is the small volume low flow nebulizer, and this is specific for long treatments too so it's con considered a continuous nebulizer so but the, the weird thing about it is if you look at it it doesn't look a whole lot different than a standard neb except for it doesn't come with a mouthpiece so this could go in go straight into a mask but you can see this neb is very specific in uh, the way it's made because it's going to have a low volume low flow and it's going to deliver the medications over a long period of time if you look at this we look at the side of it, we look at the markings on there. 10 is the max, so 10 mLs is the max on this low volume nebulizer. So we have our tubing here. This is interesting if you ever noticed this before. So this side goes to the flow meter, this side goes to the neb, and the one that goes to the neb is very, very stiff. So I think it's just so you can kind of do that plastic on plastic thing when you put it in. You push them and then give it a little, little RT twist there to make sure that it's held on tight so it's not popping off. So if you notice that, if you ever see somebody, maybe a rookie, put this part on there and then they'll shove, try to shove this thing onto the flow meter. It's kind of funny, but it works usually. All right, so let's get into what is the first thing we want to know. We got continuous nebulizer. I want to get the paper out and I want to look at two things. What's my output per hour at what flow? So open the paper up. Scan through the whole thing. So when I open up these instructions, they've got a lot of stuff on here. But where I found, oh, it's got some really interesting stuff on the back too. It actually looks at particle size, if, for all y'all interested in that. And the particle size delivered, you know, we're looking ideally for that three to five micron. They're saying one to five micron, but Anyway, what it comes down to is I look at this entire thing and the most important information is really right down here at the very bottom. At this point right here, you're going to see where it says that the dose delivered for 2 liters per minute is <clears throat> it's going to be 4 mLs and for 4 liters per minute it's going to be 10 mLs. So that's kind of generic settings. but this is made for the one hour treatment. This is not made, or the half hour treatment. This is not made for multiple hours at a time. This is also low flow, so you're not gonna give much FiO2. If your patient requires more FiO2, you're gonna need to use a large volume nib. So, lower FiO2s. So, if we're gonna go for a low flow, which is gonna be two liters per minute, our max fill is gonna be four mLs. So, if the physician orders, 10 milligrams of albuterol over one hour, and you're gonna run this on two liters, you're gonna need to have a total volume of four mLs. So you can't use unit doses. So you put unit dose in, two unit doses in, is gonna be six mLs, it's gonna to be too much. Gotta to use concentrates. So we use a half mL concentrate, 2.5, sorry, 2.5, 2.5 is five, 7.5, and then one more. So we have four of them, and those four is gonna make 10 milligrams inside of here with a total volume of two. You only gotta put two more mLs in. You can run it at two liters and it should last for an hour. They're saying 68-ish minutes. So if we wanna do the same thing, but instead of two liters, we run around four liters, we need a total volume of 10. So we put our concentrates in and then we'd fill it up to 10 uh, with the rest of our um, normal saline. So really important to know what your volume is related to your flow when you're delivering these continuous nebulizers. I would call this more of a large volume nebulizer. Any of the bonuses are 
I think it's easier to fill because you're not you're looking at this versus versus this and you can deliver more FiO2 with this if your patient's requiring that at this time. If you want to keep the FiO2s lower, keep the footprint a little smaller, use these. Um, at two liters, you're going to put four mLs total, and at four liters, you're going to put 10 mLs total. You can't really run this. I guess you could run it for two hours on two liters. Uh, you could run this for multiple hours because remember the output is 30 mLs per hour, and it looks like you can get you could probably put seven hours in there at least uh, because we got 210 ml, so that'd be a long nib. But um, and it's probably very variable after seven hours at what you're nebulizing. So just so you know, this is continuous nebulization. Um, just and, and continuous nebulizing. I'm a big fan of them because a lot of our patients are taking their standard dose of butyrol and do it or doing nebs at home, 2.5 milligrams, and when they get sick, they take them every four hours. Well, that's giving them another one when they come in the ER or when they're admitted, it doesn't really do much. I, I don't believe. I really believe you have to start them with a much higher dose to kind of get them um, opened up, if you will, because if they've been delivering this 2.5 every four hours and we just throw it on 2.5 at us, be like, what, what are we really doing? So I'm a big fan of continuous nebulizers and even high doses on continuous nebulizers because that albuterol just kind of increases, it perpetuates itself. So at, if the more you add, yeah, you're going to get more side effects. But, and you're going to get the tachycardia, the shakes, and all that kind of stuff, but you're going to uh, activate more of those receptors that are, that are likely to loosen up on the airway. So a big fan of continuous nebulizers giving large doses over an hour and then assessing um, improvement after that point. Sometimes a good continuous nebulizer can turn a patient around so maybe they don't have to get admitted. So there's some things to think about. Remember to look at your total output from any of your instructions on these. But that's the rundown of continuous nebulizers. Thanks, and uh, I'll see you next time.